morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm calling to order today public meeting number 294 of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission on Friday, March 20th, 2020 at 10 a.m. Uh, <clears throat> I wish to establish first that we have a quorum of my fellow commissioners, so I will do a roll call. Thank you. Commissioner Cameron, are you able to hear us? Uh, Commissioner Cameron? Okay, I think that she did. Yeah, I can see her. Gail, can you hear me? Gail, Gail, Gail if you could, um, let me just see, Gail, if we're able to, if you could go to the bottom of your screen and just touch, you'll see a black, um, you'll be able to unmute. I don't think she's getting any audio. I can see her and she does not seem to, she's on her phone. I think she's trying to figure that out. My suggestion is we go to the other commission members and I'll try and contact her. Yeah, if you could try to contact her, I want to make sure she can hear us. Okay, okay. before we proceed. Um, Commissioner O'Brien, are you able to hear us? I am. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Stebbins? Um, good morning, I am here and I can hear you. Excellent, thank you. And. Uh, Commissioner uh, Zuniga. Good morning, I'm here and I can hear you and see you. Excellent. Oh, you can see me. I guess I stopped the video. Good morning. I didn't stop the video, so happy to join um, by video for those who are, who are on the uh, laptop. Yeah, and uh, Kathy, uh, Gail is not able to hear us. Let me just call her and see if I can get her to... Uh, uh, to help them with the audio. Hold on. Okay, in the meantime, I'll just go through our remote policy. Um, for those of you who have not joined us beforehand and over the last um, two meetings, <clears throat> given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global coronavirus pandemic, Governor Charlie Baker issued an order to provide limited relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health and safety of individuals interested in participating and attending public meetings. <clears throat> in keeping with the guidance provided the commission conducting a, a this public meeting utilizing remote collaboration technology. And just a reminder, if there is for any reason a technical problem with our remote connection that um, makes it not a, a practical alternative, we will set up a conference line that will be noticed immediate, immediately on our website at fastgaming.com. Are you able to hear us now? We're working on it, Kathy. Give me one minute, okay? Okay, we won't start until I know that I, I hear her clearly. <laughs> you know, I'll try from this end to it. I just don't have her phone number. Let me see if she's coming in. Thank you, everyone, for your patience as we navigate. She's not able to do it on her computer, so she's going to call in if we'll just give everyone a moment. Okay? Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I 
just wanted to note that we will address today uh, the press relating to standard bread racing at Plain Ridge Park Casino. But before we proceed, I want, wish to acknowledge the devastating news now nationally shared uh, affecting the close-knit horse racing community. I wish to extend my sympathy uh, and, and on behalf of the entire commission to Mr. O'Toole, Director of Racing at PPC, who will be um, part of today's presentation, as well as those others who are joining us today who have been personally touched by the deaths of the members of the Jackson Fusco family. We have you in our thoughts and prayers, and to the extent that you can extend those to us, uh, to the family directly, we would appreciate it. Turning now to agenda item 2A, Dr. Lightbound, uh, would you like to first uh, confirm that all of your uh, guest participants are have joined us by introducing them? Um, we have Steve O'Toole, Director of Racing for Planets Park Casino. Thank you. Harris. Thank you. And on our agenda, we did have other um, individuals. Do we know if they've joined? Do you want to confirm that they're joining us? Um, Alice Spieler, Disbert the Managing Director for Harness Horsemen's Association. Ms. Tisbert, are you able to hear us? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Bob McHugh, the President of the Harness Horsemen's Association. Mr. McHugh, are you able to hear us? Perhaps he's not on the line right now, um, or if you need to unmute, you can either unmute by star six, Okay, then I'm Jeff, sorry. This is Alice Tisbert. Bob says he can um, he he can't unmute for some reason. If he tries pressing star six on his phone, could you get that message to him? Mr. McHugh, did you were you able to unmute? What I'm gonna do is unmute everyone to see if that's helpful and then if and then allow participants, I, I just don't know, I can't do that because I don't have all the participants' phone numbers, it's just too difficult. If you try, st if he presses star six, that should help him. <laughs> Katrina, do you have another idea if you're able to hear? No, you're giving the accurate instructions, Chair. Um, Unfortunately, with the phone participants, if you're on the meeting, you do need to switch to the keypad or the dial pad on your phone in order to do the star six to unmute yourself. Yeah, there are simply too many phone numbers for me to guess which one he is to try to unmute. Alex, if you have his phone number and you text it to me, or if you email it to me, I'll try to unmute him in time so he can contribute and see if I can find it. Okay, I will. Okay, we'll see how we do. Thank you. Um, of course, I'm asking her to do that, but I'm also asking her to uh, begin her. <laughs> um. Chair, his number ends in 7254. Let me see if I can do this. Thank you. 7254. Madam Chair, in the upper part of the participants, there's a search box. If you type in 7254, his number will be um, will appear, so you can unmute him. I am able to do that. Thank you so much. Just to make you did that work. Can you hear me now? It's in Christine, everybody. Thank you so much. Let's begin with Dr. Lightbomb on item number 2A. So um, it's hard to believe that uh, about a week ago we were planning on uh, having orientation for our seasonal staff this Monday. Uh, we were planning on being able to have qualifying races to start the meet. Uh, next Thursday, due to the warm weather we had. Um, obviously, a lot has changed in our world since then. Um, we uh, have been 
trying to figure out what the best uh, response to this is as far as opening the racetrack. And we uh, didn't want to have to go sort of day by day or even you know, week by week on this, um, where people are trying to um, get horses ready for a certain date. Um, also, uh, obviously affected by this, um, as obviously the horsemen are definitely affected by it. Um, our own um, staff is affected by this, with uh, you know, the closing and not being able to work. And um, obviously, the um, Plain Ridge Park Casinos um, racing staff as well. Um, some other um, things that we need to keep in mind on the racing side is our drug testing laboratory. They have been in touch with all of their clients, and um, for the time being, they are open and running. Um, but um, that could change, and they wanted everybody to be aware of that. Um, Steve O'Toole, uh, Gail Cameron, and I, Commissioner Cameron, and I all met to discuss this, and um, Steve and I felt that um, it was probably best to delay the opening until June 1st. Um, at that time, the uh, that had uh, um, more than 25 people gathering, uh, sorry, I think I'm getting that number wrong, um, 50 people was the recommendation at that, at that time, which is beginning of last week, um, be canceled for the next eight weeks. So we took that and added on time for um, qualifier races and some time um, just to get our uh, staffs up and running and get the track ready and all. Um, at that time, the uh, for, uh, Baker for Massachusetts was also um, prohibiting gatherings of over 25 people through April 5th, and obviously um, these dates and figures will all be revisited. Um, we figured that looking at our um, racing model, uh, horsemen are gathering in the paddock, as, lot, as well as Rainers Park Casino um, employees and uh, Gaming Commission employees to do their respective jobs, and that that would um, exceed the um, number of people recommended by CDC. Um, this is not something that we take lightly or that I take lightly. I understand that um, this is a very difficult time for everybody, and um, economically it's devastating. Um, so, um, again, this is not something uh, that um, I take lightly or um, that Steve Cool takes lightly. Um, we've all seen in the harness industry um, how devastating it can be and how it, it can um, spread to um, other members. Um, obviously, this is not something that's isolated to the harness communi community um, by any means. Um, it's all over. But um, I think at this point, um, I'll um, stop my comments and uh, let uh, Steve O'Toole speak. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole, are you, are you able to join us or... Um, I don't know if we checked in to make sure you could hear. Do we have Steve's uh, last, uh, the numbers? Last four digits. Uh, nine two, uh, nine four two four. Nine four two four. Yes. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. O'Toole. How are you, Steve? Good morning. I just got the message that I was unmuted. Uh, for some reason, Star Six didn't, didn't, didn't work. I, I, I understand. I, I think I've learned a, a, a new tool. So thank you. <laughs> We're learning as we go, right? Yes, yes. Thank you for your patience. Th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Alex uh, pretty much hit most of the points that, uh, that we have discussed. Um, just to add a few other points that uh, came up along the way, while Alex and I and uh, and our conversations were monitored by Commissioner Cameron uh, while we were talking, uh, Buffalo Raceway canceled its meet uh, its operations for 45 days. The Meadows Raceway canceled uh, their meet in indefinitely while we were act actually while we were discussing this. Pocono Downs. Uh, followed later that night. That was on Monday. 
um, less than a day later, what what we, I think we all felt was an aggressive uh, stand of a June of pushing the uh, racing opening to June one. I think less than 24 hours later, it seemed almost a, a normalcy. And now today, I'm 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 wondering if it's aggressive enough enough. But as uh, the, the the doctor that's become famous now, the Bucci, uh, said last night on uh, Nightline that um, we think we're being aggressive, and then we want we we, we we feel that maybe we haven't been aggressive enough. But uh, that being said, since, since that time, <laughs> since that time, as you know. Um, uh, but there's a you know, the, the, the tragedy that harness racing faced in, in New Jersey, and thank you for your comments, Madam Chair. Um, the freehold uh, paddock was the uh, kind of kind of a uh, propellant in the harness racing community for positive tests. The identifier there, which is a person that goes around and makes sure that the horses are identified properly, she has tested positive. Uh, judges have uh, self quarantined, and several horsemen are waiting. Uh, tests uh, down there that were that were present on March 7th in the paddock that day. Um, also, since then, uh, we've had some racing jurisdictions that have tried to race uh, without spectators. Uh, in my opinion, that has not worked. That's been a failure. Uh, two, two of the associations that uh, were doing that, Naira and Oakland, have uh, wound up with um, positive uh, findings of the coronavirus in their community as a result of that. And, and Naira has suspended that practice. Uh, both Rosecroft and a track in Canada were implemented such a practice and they've suspended that as well. Um, Bangor Raceway has closed. Their schedule was for May 12th. It began on May 12th. They have closed their grandstand and area is being used as a testing and triage center, so their barn area is closed as well. And Pompano Park has closed there in Florida. Uh, Pompano Park has closed their operations as well in the process of evacuation. So you know, a lot has happened since we talked on on Monday, and um, I, I, you know, I think for uh, for horsemen to realize that. Uh, we're probably not going to see uh, an opening of next week or the week after or the week after to keep their horses in top fit condition uh, would benefit them to know that the date is pushed out. Uh, what I would like to, uh, as a side recommendation, if it's if Alex, I haven't seen Alex's recommendation, uh, but if it says, if, if, if add to that that, um, you know, we could, you know, we could qualify before June 1st if the situation presents itself to be able to do that. Uh, what I would like to see is a revisit the first week or two of May to see if we can actually maintain that schedule and uh, go forward or, or if we'd have to actually extend it out further. Um, I know that the, this is bad news for the horsemen. They want to get, they want to get going. And I know that uh, I've, I've received correspondence from them that they'd like to be in lockstep with the opening of the casino, which uh, makes sense in one way, but uh, for uh, the opening of a meet, um, we would need uh, more time than when an announcement to reopen the doors of the casino. I think it takes more time for us to get uh, up and going. You know, we have there's a lot of uh, logistics involved. And right now, we have no one on the ground, as well as our vendors have suspended their operations. So, just in short, I think that um, what I thought was a very aggressive uh, tackle of this situation now is seems a reality. And um, I support uh, wholeheartedly the recommendation that we put forward. Dr. Lightbound, do we... Um Shall we hear from your other guests? Yes, um, now we can hear from Bob McHugh, the president of the Harness Horsemen's Association. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. You can hear me? You can hear me now? Yes, Mr. McHugh, I can hear you, okay. and I everybody can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, th 
thank you, Madam Chairman, and all the commissioners for participating in this meeting, and Dr. Whitebaum, and thanks in advance for asking the HHA need to participate in the meeting this morning. She can hear the concerns of the host men and women that raised the plaintiff. First of all, I have to say, we support the efforts by the Commonwealth and the Gaming Commission to delay the opening until the governor determines that it is safe to conduct business in the, as usual. In that regard, our strong opinion is that racing should commence when the casino opens. Uh, in, in our discussions, the vast majority of horses are in racing conditions and are prepping to qualify on March 26. Due to the mild winter, there were no days where weather prohibited trainers to condition their respective horses. We all read the link that Mr. O'Toole provided, which referenced the tragedy in the Fusco family, which has resulted in the death of four members and has left others in critical condition. Well, Mr. O'Toole has stated, and we agree, that the risk to others is high since racing is a transient business. The big advantage that we have and you have over the casino is you can restrict horses that race here in other jurisdictions that may be hot spots uh, for the virus for racing here. In fact, the restrictions for racing will be safer than the general public so you, since we can screen individuals racing the track. It's, it's difficult, if not impossible, to screen people who may enter the casino when it opens that may still be infected with the virus after it opens. As you meet this morning, I was listening to TV. The federal government is finalizing a plan to provide citizens with money to assist with their financial obligations, focusing on those people who have missed their very first paycheck. The trainers who race at Plainridge are in a more difficult situation since the track is closed in November. There's been no opportunity right now to make money for four months. The decision makers and most of us on this call are being inconvenienced, but are not suffering financially since we all will be paid during this crisis. To me, there's no reason why the track should not open when a casino opens. The host men and women want to work in a safe environment, and we will work with Dr. Brown, the Dr. Lightbound, and Mr. O'Toole to make that happen. The HHA requests that you take steps and implement procedures to ensure that racing commences to assist the horsemen and women who are experiencing financial distress in the current environment. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. McHugh. Alex? Uh, our next person is uh, Alice Bela Tisbert, who is the managing director of the Harness Horsemen's Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners, Dr. Lightbaum and everybody else in attendance. I'm Alice Tisbert, Managing Director for the hha and &E. I uh, also uh, completed in 2016 the FEMA CERT training course, so I am um, well aware and privy to a lot of things that are going on, and I feel that this um, unprecedented situation is going to be far-reaching. I like the idea of having a meeting uh, to uh, and sometimes in the very near future, I think, Steve, you might have said May, uh, to address the situation and see where we're at, because I think it could take us out that way. But in the same respect, the track was ready for opening uh, qualifiers for the 26th, and um, I don't believe if the governor lifts the curfew uh, and allows establishments to do business as usual, i.e. the casinos, that we can't work together to be able to open up right on that same timing, right on the heels of that. That's my, my statement. Thank you. I'm going to turn to my fellow commissioners, uh, Dr. Lightbound, if, if, um, unless you wish to add uh, any comments at this time. No, no okay. comments right now. Thank you. Um, starting with Commissioner Cameron, I know that you met oh. with Dr. Lightbound, and I'm sure that you... I'd like to share your impressions at this time. At this time, I would thank I would thank you. Um, one of the things in the conversation was that I was um, uh, I thought was very important is the fact that many many of these horses, drivers, uh, trainers travel from track to track. That's how they do business. Um, I, I suspect it's not as easy as just restricting certain folks who we thought may have raced at Freehold or Yonkers, but I would like to hear from uh, Mr. O'Toole about 
um, the ability to restrict and how safe that would keep the industry. Thank you, Commissioner Cameron. Um, Rosecroft recently tried to uh, race without spectators and try to do something similar, and they've shut down that operation. From a logistics standpoint, from uh, from from our operational uh, racing office staff, uh, I'm not I'm not really sure how we would approach that. Um, I think it would be difficult, if not impossible, to hit every um, every person that may have been somewhere where they could have come in contact with uh, COVID-19. Um, while if that was a directive from the commission, I would definitely try to um, uh, try to do that. But um, I, 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 I can't fathom the logistics of it and being accurate uh, to, to screen to screen appropriately like that. Thank, thank you, Mr. O'Toole. Dr. Lightbaum, can you speak to that issue of the transient nature and um, trying to restrict those who may have been in contact? So uh, probably uh, around 90, 95% of our uh, horsemen are ship-ins. We have a very small amount that are, would actually be stabled on the grounds during live racing. And um, part of the difficulty is like the, uh, the secondary um, contact. So it could if, um, you know, say uh, there was a hot spot in Maine and you restricted any horses or trainers from Maine from um, being entered, um, that doesn't uh, factor in that maybe some of those people from Maine raced in New Jersey or maybe they raced in New York, the, um, you know, recently or whatever. So um, it is very difficult to um, state by state. Um, we do things like this on the animal side when we have diseases uh, passing um, in the horse population um, and uh, certainly restriction uh, of movement is um, a, a wonderful way to stop the spread of virus, um, but it's much more difficult in a human population to do this. And um, for instance, with the horses, it's um, pretty easy to tell where um, an individual horse is gone because have their racing lines um there isn't necessarily something like this on the human side so it, um i think it would be challenging to um reopen in that manner okay thank you very helpful commissioner cameron do you have any other questions uh i do not thank you okay, okay. commissioner o'brien do you have questions um if um dr lightbound or people to maybe clarify for me, are there minimum requirements in terms of the number of animals that would be in the barn and any handlers that would need to be there in terms of you know, on a given typical race day, what would be the minimum number of people that would be in that area? So it's a seven horse, uh, seven race paddock and there's um, eight stalls per race, um, a couple of them, there's a couple of extras. Um, and then there's also, um, you know, a stall where the um, marshal's horse goes. So you're talking, over, you know, over 50 horses, and um, each one of those um, has a handler. Um, you're also talking about drivers, um, and some of these, uh, there's some overlap. Maybe one trainer has uh, two or three horses in. Um, maybe a groom handles several horses, but you would easily be over the um, 50 in the paddock area just with that. And that doesn't include people um, who work as racing officials for Plain Ridge Park Casino. Um, you have your paddock judge, your marshal, your veterinarian, your identifier, security. And then on our end, we have um, our veterinary commission, um, two different uh, veterinarians doing different jobs. And as well as outside of the paddock, we have our whole um, the licensing staff and the judges. Thank you, Dr. Lightbone. I, I would say at this point, I, I'm agreeing with um, the conclusion that was made by the three of you in the meetings uh, earlier in the week. It seems the situation varies at all the further now. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Stebbins, do you have um, questions or comments? Um, no, I think I thank Robert and Alice and, and, uh, and Steve for helping us out on 
this decision in their input. Um, I will tell you that uh, Director Griffin and Director Lightbound and I had a call yesterday, and we're trying to figure out whether some of the, the state agencies that provide support during some of these crises moments might be able to to help our friends in the harness racing industry. So we're doing some follow-up on that as, uh, as we speak. Thank you for that. I'm glad that that's underway. And uh, Commissioner Zuniga, your questions and comments? Sorry, I, um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, um, I agree with, um, with everything that, uh, that's been proposed and said. Uh, the only question I, I would ask, uh, which I guess uh, it's more out, out of curiosity, what's a normal, I mean, I'll, I'll start with, uh, with um, Dr. Lightbaum and then, you know, go to others. Uh, but uh, what would be a normal lead time between, you know, uh, an opening day and uh, how many days, if you will, uh, anybody would have to come back to mobilize to start getting into the track. That's the one difference that I see on racing relative to um, the casino, for example. Uh, if someday in the future everybody's in the all clear, there's a bit of a lead time uh, for the racing industry. So what, um, what might that be is my only question. Um, it's kind of an unprecedented um, territory because normally um, we have the winter to get ready. Um, in a lot of uh, sense, we are ready. Um, we're continuing to onboard our uh, seasonal um, employees. Um, we've done some ordering. Um, there are some uh, concerns. For instance, we have a lot of exam gloves because our um, veterinary technicians use those for gathering samples. Um, as you've all seen in the news, there seems to be a shortage of medical supplies. And if at some point um, the governor asked any state agency that had any um, things like um, exam gloves to uh, turn them over to uh, the hospitals for human use, we would certainly do that. Um, the other thing that um, is kind of out there that I don't know about is our um, drug testing lab that is in Colorado. Um, normally, there is no concern that they're going to be open and ready for us to send samples to them. Um, under this situation, um, we just don't know what um, the future holds uh, for, for them and um, for them sending home um, their employees to um, self-isolate. So um, it's difficult for me to, to give, um, you know, a time. It also kind of depends on how the uh, virus goes. If it, um, if there's kind of a lead, long lead time on the virus where it definitely looks like it's getting better, but the um, governor or the CDC hasn't lifted their recommendations, we may be able to um, get ready during that time period. And as soon as the um, governor says go, we may be in a better position to say, okay, a week from now, we would be ready. Um, if that's not the case, we may need long, you know, longer wait time to get everybody back. Um, as well, um, our seasonal people, um, it, where they are seasonal, our job for them is part-time, and a lot of them have another job. Um, those jobs are probably also being impacted by this, but for those who are able to um, continue working their other jobs um, or increase their hours because they're uh, not working for us, um, you know, we want to be able to uh, give that message that we're not going to be um, open right away. So um, I heard, uh, oh, the Commissioner Zuniga, did you have a follow-up? No, no, that was very helpful. I was just going to thank uh, Dr. Lightbaum for that. And I was just going to mention, um, if there's anybody out there that has both the audio and the phone, uh, the audio on the computer and the phone, and dial by phone, I suggest you uh, you need at least one of them. Did you, uh, you know, that might be. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Enrique. Um, you know, uh, what I heard for recommendation, uh, Dr. Lightdown, and, and, and correct me or, or um, either correct or adjust me, uh, uh, what I'm hearing, is that there would still be a recommendation for June 1st, given how fluid 
things are and given how difficult things are and the anxiety created by um, the, the loss of, of, of uh, wages and, and expectations that we revisit this. We have pledged to be nimble with our meetings uh, unless I hear any objection from my fellow commissioners, we can easily mark this up for a, um, a future meeting, even if it's in April, if that's going to help reduce anxieties and keep communication open. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not hearing an adjustment to the June 1st recommendation at this time. Uh, I had the same question that both... Um, well, that uh, Commissioner O'Brien asked and Commissioner Zuniga asked, it seems to me we would want to make sure it's the safety of all people um, after uh, we get through this period with respect to the reach of the virus. And then at the same time, if racing is to commence, we would want to make sure to ensure the safety of all the horses, that they are prepared for training their training element to actually race. And of course, we would um, defer to the judgment of all of you experts. Does it make sense to mark this up? Um, we have our agenda setting meeting on Wednesday to look at perhaps a late April date, early May date to revisit this. Commissioner Cameron, what are your thoughts? Oh, Commissioner Cameron, are you able to unmute? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Thank you. I did mute to try to um, save on everybody else's uh, coverage and, and sounds here. Um, Thank you. I certainly agree with the recommendation of June 1st um, for all of the reasons stated, the joint recommendation by uh, our racing division and Plain Ridge Park Raceway, Mr. O'Toole. Um, uh, yes, we can meet, um, I, I would think, around the beginning of May would be appropriate and really um, take a look at where we know that this is changing pretty much daily, so that would be appropriate to meet then and, um, and and make sure we're on track, or is there another decision needed at that time? So I agree with that. Great. Um, and and uh, Commissioner O'Brien, thoughts? No, I think that's reasonable. I think that the D is appropriate given what we know, um, and as you said, I think we're quite capable of pulling together and meeting expeditiously if... Um, it turns out that it is um, contained better and faster than we currently anticipate and then we could advance the date. But I, I think the timing you talk about is appropriate. Okay, Commissioner Stebbins? Um, I agree with the recommendations. Um, and to your point, Madam Chair, the fact we can be nimble as, as this situation evolves. Um, I did have a question for Mr. O'Toole, if I can throw a question okay. at this point in. Sure. Um, Obviously, the, the barn in the paddock area has been uh, inactive since the end of racing season. Um, obviously, we keep hearing about uh, deep cleanings of all our casino properties, but are there steps you might anticipate taking to, to make sure that the, the facilities are cleaned, um, I guess, prior to, prior to any opening date? Just not sure on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this this past week, uh, uh, Dominic sent the uh, EBS crew down to the racing building, and that's that's been that's been done. Um, that's the where uh, Alex operates out of with the licensing staff, um, and we'll do the same thing uh, in the paddock when we bring back the full staff uh, when it's when it's uh, clear to clear to go. Um, the barns have been vacant. They've been uh, they've been shut down. There's been absolutely no activity in there since uh, the, the last day of racing. Uh, we'll definitely go through and, uh, and and clean it up best we can. Uh, the paddock obviously is of, of utmost concern because that would be where probably most of the if there could be possibly any uh, infection uh, disinfected. But we'll definitely we'll definitely do that. And those are some of the logistical items when. Uh, the all clear is given. Those are some of the logistical, logistical items that we have to uh, tackle, not only with our staff um, and the EVS crew, but uh, as well as our vendors getting certain aspects of our um, racing operation up, up and going. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. 
appreciate that. Commissioner Sunika. Uh, no, no more questions. And um, I, again, uh, just in, uh, agreeing with the recommendation and the ability of us to come back and release it in very short um, uh, turnaround time if, as conditions change. Yes, so um, again, uh, <clears throat> to those who have joined us, we, we do hear um, uh, all the difficulties presented um, <clears throat> for this community. And I think that we have the ability to certainly hear from you again um, in the interim. Without further questions or comments, do I have a motion then? Uh, Madam Chair, I move uh, that we approve uh, the joint recommendation uh, presented by Mr. O'Toole and Dr. Lightbaum to, uh, to postpone racing, the start of racing, till June 1. I would second that. Any comments, edits? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins? Uh, aye. And the chair said, yes, thank you, five zero, and to all of you, uh, thank you so much for your leadership in this meeting. And we, again, extend our condolences for the losses here. Um, and we will, uh, we will get, uh, I'm sure Dr. Lightbound will get back to you as to our um, May meeting or late April or May, early May meeting that we'll, we'll um, arrange for as discussed. Thank you. Moving on to item B, please. Uh, this is a um, request promotional fund reimbursement for PPC. Uh, we did have this item on our last. Uh, regularly scheduled commission meeting that um, began on March 12th and we had to uh, suspend that meeting and we did not address a few items. This is one of them. Dr. Lightbound. So yes, uh, thank you for putting this on the agenda. Uh, and I'll turn to uh, Chad Borg, our senior financial analyst, and he can read the most for you. Chad? Thank you. Yes, can you hear me? We can, Chad, thank you. Madam Chair and Commissioners, good morning. Good morning, uh, Chad. Good morning. Uh, so each month, funds from racing activities are deposited into the Harness Horse Promotional Trust Fund for use in promotional marketing. Funds are then distributed upon the Commission's approval of a request for consideration, followed by a request for reimbursement. This item is a request for reimbursement submitted by Plain Ridge Park Casino in the amount of $5,000. This is from the Winter Wonderland Handicapping Contest that was approved by the Commission back on January 23rd. Alex, Todd, and I reviewed all supporting documentation to ensure all funds were used to support the contest. And I just want to... Um, Bring Steve on if you're available to let us know how the event went. Just so that everybody knows, noise, including music. Uh, thank you. So if we could mute, that would be great. Uh, I, uh, my puppy is way upstairs in our house, so I appreciate uh, everybody handling their their household noise. So thank you. Okay, uh, we're good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chad. And Madam Chair, thank you for hearing this. Uh, I wasn't expecting this to be on the uh, agenda, but uh, thank you. It's one housekeeping thing that uh, less, less work to do later on. Uh, the, the contest went extremely well. Um, on the past uh, agenda, we did have a, more, a much more aggressive um, campaign for handicapping contests because of the success of this first one. And um, obviously, uh, the, 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 they were date specific, and those those dates are going to get uh, uh, so maybe maybe later on we might be able to uh, 
pick up some of them. One of them was going to be in the month of April on our live racing. Um, so uh, with that said, we would love to come back and present that at a later date. Uh, but that contest was an extreme success for the nominal uh, fees that we threw at it. The customers were really grateful. Uh, the what have you done for us lately uh, attitude well, wasn't there at all, <laughs> as I expressed earlier. So uh, we thank the commission for considering it, and, um, and, and, and we're really delighted that it went off as well as it did. Excellent news. Uh, Chad, is there anything further? I know you need a vote from us today, but Dr. Light Brown, Chad, are we all set to proceed? Yes, we are. Thank you. All set. Thank you. Any questions from my fellow commissioners? I'll go in order. Dr. Uh, the Commissioner Cameron. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner O'Brien. No questions. Thanks. Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, Madam Chair, you know how I feel about promotional and capital trust funds, but no questions at this point. Duly noted. And Commissioner Zuniga. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Commissioner Zuniga, I am missing you at my left. Um, thank you. Um, barring no questions, do I have a motion? Commissioner O'Brien, perhaps? Uh, Madam Chair, I would move that the commission, just getting to the agenda, that the commission vote to um, approve the request to Plain Ridge Park um, Race Course Promotional Fund reimbursement submitted and included in the packet for the commissioners today in the amount of $5,000. Thank you. Back second. Second. Commissioner Cameron, second. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Barring any. Objection? Question? Someone has a phone call. Um, all of those in, um, and all of those in favor say aye. I'm going to again go through the roll call. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Chair votes yes. Five zero. We're happy to take care of that and, and glad to give along. A little bit of uh, positive news, at least five thousand dollars worth. So, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have not heard from any of my fellow commissioners that there is an item um, that we need to address um, for three. Uh, but given the circumstances, I do want to offer that. So I'll go through um, <clears throat> with, each, with respect to each of you. Is there something that we did not anticipate that we should address now? given how fluid things are, that something could have arisen. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, nothing at this time, thank you. Commissioner um, <clears throat> O'Brien, excuse me. Uh, I have nothing right now, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zuniga. Uh, nothing, Chair, thank you. Thank you, and Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, nothing at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I'll need a motion to adjourn. Commissioner so Zuniga. Moved. Okay, so moved and second. Uh, second. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Chair votes uh, yes, 5 0. This meeting is adjourned. And again, thank you, everyone. Please stay safe. We, um, we are all in this together and appreciate everyone's attention. Thank you so much. Thinking of you all. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>